reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Dearly beloved, it is God who, in his good will toward you, begets in you any measure of desire or of achievement. In everything you do, act without grumbling or arguing. Prove yourselves innocent and straightforward, children of God beyond reproach in the midst of a twisted and depraved generation, among whom you shine like the stars in the sky while holding fast to the word of life. As I look to day, as I look to the day of Christ, you give me cause to boast that I did not run the race in vain or work to no purpose. Even if my life is to be poured out as a libation over the sacrificial service of your faith, I'm glad of it and rejoice with all of you. May you be glad on the same score and rejoice with me. Verbum Domini. The just man shall be in everlasting remembrance. Happy the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. He dawns through the darkness, a light for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Well for the man who is gracious and lends who conducts his affairs with justice, he shall never be moved. The just man shall be in everlasting remembrance. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Dominus vobiscum, et cum spiritu tuo, Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioannem, Gloria Tibi Domine. This is my commandment, love one another, as I have loved you. There is no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I no longer speak of you as slaves, for a slave does not know what his master is about. Instead, I call you friends, since I have made known to you all that I heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, it was I who chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure, 
so that all you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. The command I give you is this, that you love one another. Verbum Domini When we read the lives of the saints, we see in them phenomenal and exceptional holiness. We see in them great acts of charity. The most inspirational of all saints are those who give their life for the brethren who follow the command of Jesus that we hear today. There is no greater love for a man than he that lays down his life for his friends. And this is true of today's saint, Saint Francis Mary of Comparoso. He was a very simple man, a lay brother who belonged to the Capuchin Franciscan order. And all the man aspired to being was to be like Jesus in the way St. Francis of Assisi teaches us. He was a true follower of our Holy Father, St. Francis of Assisi. And this is why he never wanted to become a priest, is because he, he wanted to follow the ways of Francis of Assisi and the ways he shows us to Jesus Christ. And this saint, you know, besides showing us exceptional holiness, in, and, and also in, in showing us great charity, the most simplest of, of matters and works. He also shows us how not to be. And St. Paul mentions today that he's in, in telling us, do all things without grumbling or arguing. And what we see of of this uh, St. Francis Mary of Comparoso is a man who cooperates, a man who willingly accepts the will of God without questioning or arguing. And so now let's look a little deeper into the life of St. Francis Mary of Comparoso. Of course, you know, he grew up in a very devout Catholic family and home uh, around in his teenage years, he felt the, the desire to become a, a Franciscan. He was, of course, amazed, astounded by the life of St. Francis of Assisi and said, this is the way I'll follow. This is the way to Jesus for me. And so around, oh, um, 18, he was born in 1804, but it was around 1822 when he joined the Franciscan Capuchins. And there he, was, he entered he was accepted into the postulancy. His postulancy uh, continued on for about three years. Usually it's a year. After that, around 1825, he became a novice. And it was there that his superior started to see his holiness, you know, that, that this was exceptional. This was, this, was, uh, this was unusual. And so then around the year 1826, he made his perpetual vows to commit his life in serving the Lord in poverty and chastity and obedience, living like Jesus. That's all the man wanted. And so, you know, because of his, uh, his commitment to the order and to St. Francis and, to, and because of his love of God, which was visible to everybody, they sent him to a very busy friary. And this was called the Immaculate Conception Friary. It was in a place called Giona, Italy. And there, it was, it, was, uh, it was a place where people came from all, all over the city. Um, they were involved in several pastoral works, some of them very uh, practical uh, works as well. They had a mill there uh, for metal. They had a pharmacy, uh, a place where you can get a, like a clinic to get health care and things like that. You know, so there was all sorts of things going on. And 
uh, Saint, uh, Saint Francis Mary, uh, he did uh, what was called like uh, an apprenticeship. And this lasted for about five years. And, uh, you know, he, he, was, he subjected himself to many years of, of learning to, the, to these five years, which he did so willingly. And, uh, you know, in those five years, your know, people, you know, people were very edified by just his, his commitment to the order, but his, his, his cooperation to do what he was being asked to do and, and to learn all kinds of trades. And, of course, in, in doing that, he had a, a much interaction with many people. And he says, well, this, you know, this man, he's, he's very real. He's very practical. Sometimes in the lives of the saints, you know, we see it's just like, well, you know, they're, um, it doesn't seem real. But, you know, this, this person, you know, was very down to earth, just a wonderful listener and very kind man. So after this time of, um, of, of apprenticeship, you know, he just grew in holiness, of course, doing many works of charity, um, giving himself much for love of the people around him. And as, uh, as I was saying, he was, he was a great listener. You know, it, you know with the thing about him is that, you know, we don't see a lot of miracles coming out of him. Um, but, you know, he did have the gift of prophecy to tell future events. But, you know, th this man, I mean, he captivated people and he moved people to, to believe in Jesus just by his very simple acts of charity. Listening, giving people time, just being kind and courteous, acknowledging people, smiling. And it was this that, that brought warmth to people's hearts. And, and like I said, it made him think about Jesus. It's, here's, here's a true Christian man. Here's a true Catholic here. And of course, like every, um, like every saint, you know, they, they're, very, uh, uh, they're very much into dying to self. And usually that's, of course, in the form of prayer and penances. But uh, St. Francis Mary was very uh, extreme in these uh, penances and mortifications that uh, his superiors, they, they had to tell him to calm down. He willingly accepted that too. He says, okay, you know, I'll do that. And there he goes on. But toward, um, you know, as I was saying, that he was a man who really didn't argue or, or question, but, but cooperated. You know, he also lived at a time where there was great uh, political tension, uh, many issues in, in the world of, uh, in, in the government there. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of fighting around there, and, uh, but yet he, people would come to him to talk and, and they would always leave very peaceful. But then, you know, some of this, uh, this arguing and uh, some, of this, uh, um, some of these issues and tensions came into the, into the friary. And so the friars, you know, they, they kind of started arguing amongst themselves and they got cut up in this. And, but yet, what we see from St. Francis Mary is that he doesn't, well, dive into this. He, he, sit, he, he, he stays back, you know, but yet he rises above. He doesn't get involved in the arguing and the gossiping or anything like that. You know, he's not consumed with the, with the anger. He's, he's very peaceful. And he provides an example to all those in the friary. So toward the end of his life, it was about the year 1866, it was uh, just uh, as summer was, uh, was concluding. It was around August. And uh, there, uh, there broke out cholera. They, that it, they said that it was coming through, uh, through the ports, through the, through the sea, and uh, through the ships. So they, of course, uh, closed off shipping. But right as the, as the, the epidemic you know, grew and uh, people were becoming ill, there he goes into action going to, to help people, you know, to not even thinking about himself, but just makes himself a sacrificial offering like he was doing all his life by giving just in little things in simple ways. Because he was, was faithful to these simple tasks that the Lord asked for us, it's just tasks of charity, he can do much larger ones. So, when the, so as the cholera broke out, there he goes, helping the, the, the sick and the wounded, the, the needy, the poor. But as a result of this, he became sick himself. And then he eventually died on, uh, on September 15th, 1866. And within a few weeks following his death, the epidemic disappeared. Nobody was sick. 
and they attributed this to the prayers of St. Francis Mary of Comparoso. It says, wow, you know, it's, it's his prayers. You know, many of the saints have said that I will spend my eternity, I will spend my heaven doing good on earth. This is what we see here of St. Francis Mary. And, you know, this is a, the type of holiness that we should aspire to. And this is, this, is, this is observing the command of Jesus today. Love one another as I have loved you. you know, but that could be a little difficult. There can be an obstacle there. As I was saying earlier, the teaching of St. Paul, what, is, what could be the obstacle? Grumbling and arguing. You know, we, we are asked to do something, say at the parish, say by our confessor or spiritual director, or uh, our, our pastor, a priest, or somebody in the head of an organization in the, inside the church. They, they tell us to do something. There we go, you know, all fuming already and grumbling within ourselves and, um, you know, seeking a way to, to argue and bring dissension. And, and as a result of that, that brings division. Oh, and this, this could impede our, our, our path to holiness. You know, kind of clog the channels of graces coming through. You know, but as we learn from St. Francis Mary, he submits, he cooperates what God is doing. Now, it doesn't mean that we, we can't question, but, but it's how we question. It shouldn't be questioning, questioning with, with like suspicion in our hearts or with, with, with distrust or, or with, uh, with a spirit of um, a pessimistic spirit or a very negative spirit. But we, you know, and, and even, even if, we, if we see that there's maybe something wrong in what we're being told, but, you know, making a suggestion, but doing this in kindness, in humility, not, not in grumbling and arguing. See, this, this could, again, like this keeps us back from, from becoming true, truly holy people. You know, like, like I was saying, you know, with the simple things, you know, that this is where... This is what, how this saint arose to holiness, by just doing simple acts of charity and doing them well. But if we're in a state of grumbling, always arguing or, or pouting or whining, then, you know, we're, we're, so, we're, we're very self-focused and, and selfish that, you know, we, we forget about doing these very simple acts of charity. And so, my brothers and sisters, you know, the, Taking on, you know, certain tasks of being obedient to, to those who are leaders requires some dying to self. You know, St. Paul here uh, mentions that, that making himself a sacrifice. And that's what we need to do as well when we're told to do something or when we're told to correct something about us. He says, okay, I will do it. You know, we shouldn't be like, well, what about them? How come they're not doing it? How come you didn't ask them? Well, look, they have the same problem. How come you're not talking to them? It's not about them, it's about, it's about us. You know, what, what, what God is doing in us and being submissive to what he's trying to tell us. See, then again, there we go advancing. But this is, this is a very powerful way to, uh, of, of sacrificing ourselves, of dying to the flesh by not grumbling and questioning. If, there, if there's something, if this is, just seems like natural to us, maybe it's a habit we've had for years, then ask the Lord for healing. So, Lord, heal me from this. You know, bring it to him. It's a, it's a way also to, to offer it up. You know, this, is, this is how, like I said, this, this will only bring us to, to become holier, only dying to the flesh. And as we die with Christ, so we rise with him. And so, my brothers and sisters, you know, uh, so we pray. We pray that we may have, have this uh, very simple charity, you know, that, that we may submit to what God is telling us through our superiors, through our leaders. We may cooperate without grumbling and questioning. And all of this, all of this for the purpose of glorifying God. And so that we could, you know, rise in love. And even in just the simple things, which, which these simple things are, are the most powerful. So again, we ask for the prayers of St. Francis Mary Coparoso. And we ask that, that he uh, pray for us on our journey. We know that his prayers are, are powerful in eternity. I mean, we just heard about that, what, what happened with the cholera disease. So we ask him to pray for us that, you know, we, we may submit ourselves and we may rise in, in the love and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord.
God bless you all.